the internal structure of the capsule shows the capsule shows three distinct regions one is the basal part which is called as the epiphysis the central region called as the theca and the upper part which is called as the operculum the epiphysis is made up of parenchymatous cells but the outermost layer is the epidermis which has thick walled cells the epidermis of the epiphysis is interrupted by stomata Inner to the epidermis, the cortical region is composed of parenchymatous cells with intercellular spaces, and these parenchymatous cells contain chloroplast. That is, the cortical zone of the epiphysis is chlorenchymatous. or made up of chlorenchyma tissue that is parenchyma tissue containing chloroplast which helps in the process of photosynthesis the central region of the epiphysis has elongated cells which are the continuation of the central cylinder in the ceta zone from the ceta the central cylinder enters into the epiphysis region above the epiphysis is the theca region the epiphysis is separated from the theca region by a constriction The epiphysis is a sterile zone. The theca is the fertile region of the capsule. It is angular because of the presence of longitudinal grooves. Externally, when we see look at the theca, we find longitudinal grooves on the surface of the theca. The theca has a number of wall layers. The outermost wall layer is the epidermis, which is in continuation with the epidermis of the epiphysis. The outermost wall layer of the theca zone is the epidermis. The cells of epidermis have thick walls inner to the epidermis we find two to three layers of cells which are parenchymatous in nature they are thin walled cells and contain chlorophyll or chloroplast there are two to three layers of cells these are the wall layers inner to the wall layer there is an air space otherwise also called as the lacuna this region this region is the air space
so the wall layer is followed by an air space or lacuna the air space is traversed by a number of transverse walls these transverse walls are multicellular uniseriate structures that means if you look at each transverse wall it is like this it has a number of cells but they are they are all arranged in a single row these transverse partitions are called as the trabeculae the trabeculae are connected towards the outside to the wall layer and towards inside they are connected to the wall of the spore sac that is inner to the air space there is a spore sac this spore sac has single a wall layer which is made up of single layer of cells this spore sac if we look at the spore sac this is the outer wall layer of the spore sac this is the inner wall layer of the spore sac so these trabeculae which are there towards the outside are connected to the wall layer on the outside and to the wall inner outer wall layer of the spore sac so this is one side they are connected to the spore sac the other side they are connected to the wall layer the spore sac contains a single layer of cells which is called as the archisporial tissue initially the archisporial tissue is single layered but as the capsule matures the archisporial tissue divides and forms a number of layers or a number of cells ultimately these cells change themselves into spore mother cells and the spore mother cells undergo reduction division to form spore tetrads this happens at maturity of the capsule that means as a capsule grows older a single layer of the archisporium divides to form many layers ultimately the cells are differentiated as the spore mother cells these spore mother cells undergo reduction division and they form spore tetrads in order to the spore sac again we find another air space this air space is called as the inner air space this is also traversed by large number of transverse walls called as the trabeculae so this trabeculae of the inner air space are connected towards the outside to the spore wall towards the inside they are connected to a column of cells this column of cells which is seen in the center of the capsule is called as the columella the columella is in continuation with the central cylinder of the seta the columella is made up of elongated cells and is sterile in its nature on this side of this on the other side of the capsule also we find that there is an air space the air space is followed by a spore sac there is again another air space towards the inside the spore sac contains the archisporial tissue both the air spaces are traversed by transverse septa called as the trabeculae 
on both the sides the similar structure on both the surfaces the theca is followed by the upper part of the capsule which is called as the operculum the operculum the base of the operculum is broad and is called as the rostrum the rostrum towards its upper surface or towards the apical region is drawn into a beak like structure the operculum is connected to the theca by a ring of cells called as the ring the theca is separated from the operculum by a constriction at the mouth of the theca zone surrounding the rim or surrounding the rim cells we find the peristome the peristome in polytrichum has two layers of cells called as or tooth like structures called as the peristomial teeth each tooth is a triangular upwardly directed structure the columella which is seen in the center is like a column expands or extends from the base of the epiphysis from the base of the theca to the mouth of the theca but as it proceeds to the mouth of the theca it expands and forms a membranous structure at the mouth of the theca that is the mouth of the theca is covered by a structure a membranous structure here which is called as the epiphren as the capsule matures and the spore mother cells undergo reduction division the spores get released in this region at maturity the capsule dehisces in the process of dehiscence the opercular region gets separated from the rim cells the epiphrem which is seen in the center closing the mouth of the theca that gets exposed to the external environment when the epiphrem is exposed to external environment because of the dry condition the cells in the epiphrem they start shrinking so when you look at the epiphrem it is an expanded structure which has thin wall cells like this all the cells they start shrinking when they start shrinking they lose their attachment from the periphery of the epiphrem that means we can find small holes created in the peripheral region of the epiphrem and at this time or at during this condition the capsule is not erect like this on the plant but it changes its position and becomes horizontal initially when it is young the capsule will remain in a horizontal position on the plant like this in a vertical position on the plant like this but as dehiscence occurs the capsule will attain a position which is horizontal and the operculum gets separated if the frame is exposed the operculum is like this separated the spores start and due to wind when the wind uh, when the capsule sways in the wind 
all the spores which are there in the capsule region are dropped down or they are dispersed through these holes which are created in the epiphren zone. This method of dispersal of spores from these holes due to the swaying action of the capsule in the wind is called as the sensor mechanism. The sensor mechanism of dispersal of spores.